This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's Word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. Don't worry, in second service we will dance more. Glory to God. Good morning, church. Well, November 1st precisely is 35 years. When we gather some 15, 10, 15 people somewhere and we are clapping hands. I don't, it's almost unbelievable that time has gone this fast. But we are grateful to him. Amen. Um, you know, it's a special Sunday, so let me talk a little bit before I go very deep. Uh, we are very grateful this morning. Some of our guests are already coming in. Dr. Michael Biora is in the house this morning. He is preaching tomorrow night. And it's going to be powerful. So you want to be here. Papa Ron and Mama Paula are also in the house. I'm sure they will greet you later. Father, I thank you this morning. Who am I that should give us this assignment? We have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the wise. That the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. And so that it will return the glory to you. That you called us and gave us this assignment. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Some announcements will come later, but let me quickly go into the word. Revelations chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. If you notice, we have the God of the open door up there. The background of this, for you to understand, on the 16th of January this year, in an encounter with the Lord, I just realized as that a key, I can describe the key to you, but it's not important, was dropped into my spirit from my mouth <laughs> into my spirit. And then this scripture was quickened to me. On the 3rd of November 2019, the Lord appeared to me and said something similar. It was like a continuation of the 3rd of November 2019 visitation. On the 3rd of November 2019, the gate we normally come in, in that end gate where you drive in, I saw the Lord Jesus, he came there, and just, he just opened the gate. And he said to me, I have come to open the ship gate. And I thought to myself, ship gate? Does it mean the gate was closed before? But that year, COVID came in 2020. In that COVID year, we saw a 30% growth in mission, which is physically impossible. And so if, you, if we read this with, with this in mind, let's look at Revelation 3, 7, and 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened it, and no man what? Shut it, and shut it, and no man opened it. He opened it, and no man shut it. He shut it, and no man opened it. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. So for me, as I put those two encounters together, I believe that we are going to season of open door of the key, the master key for the open door as a ministry and as individuals. There are doors that have been shut against you. Friends, they are open this year. When there's a casting down, there shall be what? A lifting up. Now, in verse 7, Jesus said he had the key of David. Just for a little understanding, the key of David is the exercise 
of greater authority, influence, and dominion. Can somebody say that with me? The key of David is the exercise of greater authority, influence, and dominion. Now, we know Jesus holds the key of David as the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant in Luke chapter 1, verse 31 and 32. Luke 1, 31 and 32. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. The key of David specifically in scripture, in Isaiah 22, 22, you find this statement uh, when the prophet informs the palace secretary Shebna that he shall be replaced by Eliakim in Isaiah 22, 22. He said he will place, because God will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. So it signifies authority. It's, and Jesus has the key of David because he also conquered the devil and went into his domain and overthrew him and gave you the key of authority this morning. So on a spiritual angle, amen, Jesus gave us authority to do the impossible. Restoration, get ready to do the impossible. I say restoration, get ready to do the impossible. As a church, we already have that key because Jesus gave us. But there's a time and a season when God says to you, I got something bigger. I got something higher. I got something bigger. I got something higher. I'm taking you to a place you've never been. Restoration, hear me very well. God is taking us individually and corporately to a place we've never been. God is taking us individually and corporately to a place we've never been. I see millionaires and I see billionaires. I see people, captains of industry. I see people that have been written off by life. I see God bringing you to that place. I am going to where he has written for me. I don't know about you, but I'm going to where he has written for me. It's not by power, it's not by mind, but by the spirit of the Lord. Double for your trouble. All you women who have been looking for children, I prophesy by the spirit of God. It will be double, double. Twin, twin, twin all over the place. We have a testimony right there. It's going to happen for you, my sister. It's going to happen for you, my brother, because where there's a casting down, there shall be a lifting up. Is there a loud hallelujah in the house of the Lord? You believe it? Give him a loud shout of praise in the house of the Lord. Please sit down for a bit. Amos 9.13 has become a song in the last few weeks if you've been coming to church here. But I want to make the point the set time for the greater manifestation of influence, authority, promotion, acceleration is now because the God of the open door has given you the key. Say with me the set time for the manifestation of greater influence, authority, promotion, acceleration is now because the God of the open door has given you the key. Amos 9, 13, I've been sharing a lot. Psalm 102, verse 12 and 13. Then write, write down Second Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. And Genesis 41, verses 37 to 44. That means go online and download the message. Okay. Amos 9, 13, the message translation. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and the hills. Psalm 102, 13. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever. And thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the set time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Write down uh, 2 Samuel 5, 1 to 8 even. In Genesis 41, 37 to 44, we're going to reference them as, as I continue this morning. Hallelujah. You see, we have dominion in Christ. He gave us the key. He went into the domain of hell and gave us the key of authority. You and I have that. But as a time 
when God said is now. That's what Amos 9.13 is saying. And usually God does that when everybody is tired. When you have suffered, you don't see where. God will say, hey, it's my turn to move. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. When you beat a child in school and the child is so hot, when the mother appears, you better, especially if she's a boxer or the father is a heavyweight champion, you better know how you are going to behave because that mother will come with some zeal and some fire. I want to say God has seen your suffering. In Revelation 3, he said, I know what you've been through. I know your strength is small, but I've seen what you've been through. And because of what you've been through, I'm about to do something in your life. Amen. That second Samuel I told you to write down, David had been king in Hebron for seven and a half years over Judah. And it was now time, after Saul had died, the son had died, it was now time to make him king over the whole realm, over the whole of Israel. It was a now moment. The people came to look for him. Just like Cornelius. Cornelius did not apply to Peter. Peter, I want an apostolic visit. God appeared to Cornelius and said, you are going to preach to a Gentile. He wouldn't have gone ordinarily. Just like Ruth, when she was gleaning in, 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 in the farm of um, uh, Boaz, it was Boaz that came and said, who is that girl? He said, is that Moabitish girl? They didn't even know her name. She was gleaning on a farm that she was destined to own. Child of God, are you hearing me? When the now moment comes and God says, I've opened the door, COVID cannot stop increase in mission. We saw it in this ministry that during COVID, 30% growth in mission in difficult places. And I want to tell you, the God that did it that time is about to do a new thing in your life. Is there a witness in the house of God? Mordecai did not apply and say, King, you will not sleep tonight. Because the now time had come and the people had labored in prayer and they had fasted and had waited and God said, this is the now time for your deliverance. He said, I open a door no man can close. When I close it, no man can open. No makili, no masa, you will deliver a child in safety. You will deliver that child in safety. They may have been eating other people's in the womb, but you will deliver your own in safety. I'm talking to a child of God in the house of God. Please sit for a bit. She will deliver in safety. Tell her I say she should sleep well. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Cornelius did not apply. Roots did not apply. Hallelujah. When compensation time comes, it was Jesus that borrowed the boat of Peter. When he finished, he said, cast your net again. He said, we have fished all night long and caught nothing. Restoration, I want to Tata Makiboria prophesied to you that the things you could not do in 35 years, you will do it in three years. The things that look impossible in your business, play, I'm giving you a prophetic word from the throne of God because the Lord Jesus said, I have opened the door to you. They may be crying in Nigeria, but we shall be rising in Nigeria. They may be saying it's not possible, but we are going to the place of possibility. I said we are going to the place of possibility. People may close their business, but your business will not close. I say your business will not close. They may not be able to get admission. They may not be able to finance it. But the, Maki Baba, the Lord just spoke to me. He said everyone who has not yet built a house, it is your year of building your house. When that angel whispers, I, I amplify. He said, everyone who has not built a house, it's your year to build a house. Please sit down for a bit. Hallelujah. One professor, if you are with us on Facebook, you will see her testimony. She came here during the God of the open door. Did anybody see that woman's testimony? I remember praying for the woman there. She's been trying to be confirmed full professor for a long time. But she held on to Amos 913. When I was doing online for the people in UK, she joined. And quoted a prophecy similar to what I just said now. You see, when the now time comes, I, I, was it 26 she said, this week that passed, they just gave her full professorship. When Jesus said it's now, then it's now. I don't care what the political situation looks like. Most of the time, God will walk when it looks impossible. The children of Israel had been born for 430 years. It was getting worse. That's when God stepped in. And may I say to Nigeria, as we are coming out of the Red Sea, some people are entering, but we will not be one of those entering the Red Sea. 
Nigeria is exiting the Red Sea. The Egyptians will chase into the Red Sea, but they are not going to come out in the name of Jesus. I speak in parable, I come in peace. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, child of God? If you don't understand, pray. God will show you the meaning. The Egyptians you see today. Because God said, now the set time to favor Zion has come. You know, this is my son, Moses Enabulele. Some of you know him. He was here this week. While I was in the southwest, I came back on Wednesday preaching. He said, Daddy, I want to see you come. I said, come. He reminded me of that volleyballer. The woman that had two, a boy and a girl that were kidnapped in Lagos. When your now season comes, when God says now, I pray we will not leave you behind. When God said concerning Joseph, it was now. The boy went to bed a prisoner. The next night, he was going to bed as a prime minister. That's Genesis. Is it, is it possible? Is it possible that a promotion you've been denied, a seat of honor they did not give you, when the oil pours, your head will not lack oil in this season in the name of Jesus. Some of you are getting ready for position you never dreamt. When the new dispensation comes, they will, they will pick you and say, we want you to come and represent us here. They will call you. Was anybody here that, when that testimony happened? They kidnapped them in Lagos. Twins, boy and girl. Who are fasting. Pastor Leo, you must have been here. We were fasting, and I was going home, going to my car, and Pastor Moses was here then. He, he said, Daddy, there's somebody who wants you. So I came back, and they kidnapped their children. I didn't even listen to the whole story. The prophetic grace dropped from me. And when I'm under that unction, the devil is in trouble in your life. It didn't drop on me, and I said, by the middle of October, they will find the children. <laughs> Where, the thing come out. I wanted to take the words back, but it had come out. I said, eh, 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 have you ever said something? Well, mm, 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 mm. I wanted to say, excuse me, sorry, I didn't know where that came from. God is my witness. They came back with the twins. I think I traveled to Pastor Moses. I said, they were taken, ladies and gentlemen, when they were three years old. They were returned when they were 17. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of a good night. I love your voice, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night, in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. Known you as a friend, oh, I have lived in the good name. Please be seated. Friends, when your now moment comes, I don't care who closed that door. I don't care who said you cannot go in. God will bring you into that place. God will bring you into that place. God will bring us into rest. Alpha will be established. We shall walk in Alpha. We shall go in there. And the God of heaven, he will do his thing. Let me give you one or two more thoughts before I quit this morning. I'm trying to let you see where that theme is coming from. He didn't say, Tunde Bolanta, open the door. He said, I open. I open. If Igwe tells you now, I, Igwe, will give you a hundred million. You say, ah, Igwe, I know you're a man of faith, but uh, uh, <laughs> 
But another man can come in there and say, I'm going to give you 100 million. Hmm. He said, like me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you look at the man and say, this guy can do it. Have you? Yes, but the one who said, I opened the door, is not a man. His wealth is limitless. When we, in 19, 1986, I'm 36 years in full-time ministry this year. That's not when I started preaching. Some of you were still in heaven, trying to get your visa through your parents to come here. Okay? Okay? Dr. Mike, we've been together for too long. Abby? Praise God. The Lord dropped a scroll from heaven. Every time I come to a hard place, I remind myself. And on that scroll, I saw world currencies. I said, this is all you ever need in the ministry. So nothing scares me. God is my source. Nothing scares me. All right, let's take another thought. Now, in that second Samuel 5, where we read, praise God. Hmm. So Joseph, I'm sure his head was swimming. Imagine you, you are, you are in prison. Kiri, kiri. The next day, you are president or prime minister. Won't your head be swimming? He said, I will do it your head. We, you'll be pinching yourself. One of my friends, one woman, it's another story another, for another day. God used me to prophesy them into the parliament of their country. She was telling me one day that herself and her husband were standing with the late queen of England. And they whispered in their language to themselves. The man was the one telling me, have we died and gone to heaven? God will do some things in your life. You say, Father, am I at home already? God is a good God. He said, after you have suffered a while, somebody said, he said <laughs> somebody came to my house one day and said, ah, reverend, your own is not patience, it's long suffering. I said, that's okay. But when you have had long suffering for a while, God will settle you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Another important truth this morning I would like to throw in. You see, go to verse 2 Samuel 5, 6 to 8. And then... Um, And the king and his men went to Jerusalem, talking about after David was crowned king, unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in, in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever get up to the gutter and smited the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind that are hated of David, he shall be chief and captain, wherefore they said, the blind and the lame shall not come to the house. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let me read from the Amplified Classic for the point I want to make. David said on that day, whosoever smites the Jebusites, let him get up through the water shaft and smite the lame and the blind who are detested by David's soul, so they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. Revelation 1.18. I am he that liveth and, and, and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Now, what David was saying, they had a situation here. Yes, sir. They had a situation here where, you know, the, he had reigned seven and a half years in Hebron. And the whole of Israel wanted him now. To, to be king. So, he needed a capital. The Jebusites owned the place, now called Jerusalem. They owned the place. And the, it was so fortified, up a hill, there was a fortress there, no way to enter it. Their water system was through an underground tunnel. So, how do you get there? And that's why David said, whoever will take care of this has to go through the water shaft. And Joab volunteered for the job. You can read it in your Bible and you see it there. Joab volunteered and he had to crawl and climb and he got in there. Amen? It was, it was impossible. It's like coming from an underground to the top there and he was able to take the key. 
that key of David. He was able to take that key and open the gate for the troops to come in. Just like Jesus went to hell and said, I'm he that was dead and now I live. I have the keys of hell and death. The keys of the dominion, of the riches, of the wealth, of the promotion of this world is not in the hand of the devil. Jesus got it when he went through. So he had to go through that water shaft. He had to go through to come you know, to the place that he needed to open uh, the gates for them. The point I want to make you, to you this morning is that Jesus has taken the key of dominion for you to rule and reign. Can somebody say with me, Jesus has taken the key of dominion for you to rule and to reign. Imagine somebody, hey, God, we will not see Batino. You know, if people want to rob your house, they will be breaking from outside. Abby, then you'll be shouting from inside. But the person that wants to rob your house behave like Joab or like the Lord Jesus Christ. He entered the house from an underground and took the key where you kept it and opened the house. I said, they didn't break into this house far. Which road they passed? You realize if you wake up in the morning, your house was no, the wall was not broken, nothing broken. And the gate is wide open. Your parlor is wide open. What will you think? You think it's a spirit that climbed in. I want to say to you, the wind blew it where it listed. So it's a man born of the spirit. If they padlock from outside, if they padlock from inside, what I'm trying to tell you today is that the key is in our hand to open from inside, to open from outside. There are situations in Nigeria that have been padlocked from front and back. When you want to enter from front, they'll say it's not your portion. When you want to enter from inside, they say it's not your portion. But we have the life of resurrection. When Jesus rose from the dead, he came in through the wall. He did not use the door. I want to say by the power of resurrection, by the power of dominion, if we need to come in through the door, we will come in through the door. If we need to come in through the back, we will come in through the back. But the door, the key is in our hands today. Restoration. You are going to your wealthy place. He said amen in the house of the Lord today. Finally this morning, I'm rounding up now. Glory to God. Ha. Ah, the force of joy. Someone say, the force of joy. We bring the future into the present. Say it again. The force of joy. We bring my future into the present. I, Isaiah 12, 3, with joy, you will draw water out of the well of salvation. Psalm 119, 162. Psalm 119, 162. I rejoice at the word as one that findeth grace. But what I'm trying to tell you is that, Joab, they say you can't come in through the front gate. The man went through underground and opened the gate. Anywhere, if a padlock from outside, padlock from, you will enter this year. You have to have this kind of mentality. Oh. The mentality of, hey, hey, hey. We, don't, we know what is happening. We have been through the Red Sea and we didn't perish. The people that will perish there, they know themselves. But it's not you. I say it's not you. It's not your children. It's not your family. He said, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9. Whom having not seen, ye love. Him whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith and the end, even salvation of your soul. We haven't seen Jesus, but we love him. And we, re we receive the end of our faith, which is the salvation of our souls. Friends, joy has a very big key in what we are talking about. Let me tell you this story. You've heard it before. I was in a church in Lagos in December. Either second or third. Mommy will remember. And I had a word. The baby will be born and will be okay. Something like that. I can't remember exactly. 
um, the pastor of the church was sitting in front like this. He pointed to the saxophonist like this, and the guy ran forward. I started dancing. The problem was that they took in, when we say they, men, when your wife is pregnant, we are all pregnant. When she's pregnant, we are all, we are all pregnant. We yourself, you have to be washing plates, you have to be cooking. I'm looking at the man, okay, yeah, can I, can. <laughs> you have to be washing plates, you have to be cooking, you have to be washing her clothes, because she's doing a job that you cannot do. Can you be pregnant? If men get pregnant, they will just die. Say, this thing is too long. This, I want to play football. And you go and play football and kill everybody. Anyway, let's go back to that story as I round this up. They were pregnant, but they were sporting. So the wife didn't come to church. He rejoiced. Whom having not sinned, yet rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. What I'm talking about may look far-fetched to you. Second Chronicles 20. Three armies gathered against Joseph. No way. But he began to rejoice for his mercy. The thing, if you want, C.S. Lewis said, joy is the atmosphere of heaven. If you, if you go to God and say, hey, God, there, there's four Q in Kaduna. In heaven, people are always rejoicing. Four Q. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, he that sits in heaven will laugh. I say, ha, 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 ha. We know that will be okay. The blood is more than enough. Terrorism, ha, 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 ha. Jesus conquered that one as well. Is there anything we want to mention that Jesus did not conquer? Anyway, on my birthday, that same January 16th again, we were here, and the pastor was firing. If I saw a call, I didn't answer, because we were praying. You know, during my birthday, we were always fasting. It falls in the fasting period. My birthday is fasting time. <laughs> eh? Person they do bad day, he cannot eat better. Too. <laughs> so I was just telling this guy should leave me. Then he sent me this big text message. The woman went into premature labor. They ran to the hospital. The first hospital was too expensive. By the time I think they got to the second one, she was delivered of the baby, but the baby had died. But remember, the man rejoiced. That the baby will be okay. Now the doctor said, the nurse said, pack it up. It has died. Every time you rejoice, you make a sacrifice to heaven. He said, Psalm 20, may the Lord remember your burnt offering and your sacrifice. When I'm dancing in this church and I'm running around like a madman, I know the door for you. I'm doing it for the heaven will write it down and say, this boy, when he felt like crying, Maybe you had a miscarriage and you still came to church today. If you will dance before the Lord and you say, Father, I rejoice you are bigger than this thing. Heaven will write it for you. In the day you need intervention, the book of record will be opened like Mordecai. And say the sacrifice. So if there's somebody here who wants to rejoice about the victory they have not seen, why don't you stand up and give the Lord a shout of rejoicing in the house? Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Rejoicing for the next 35 years. The thing you are going to do in this place. Can somebody wave their hand? Can somebody give the Lord a shout? Father, I'm rejoicing. I'm having a praise break right now. I'm praising you for what you are going to do. I'm praising you for what you are going to do. I'm praising you for what is happening. I'm praising you for Alpha University. I'm praising you for everything we need to see. Everything in our family that needs to happen. Everything restoration family that needs to happen. I'm rejoicing. I'm shouting. Somebody shout. Shout! Somebody 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 shout! Hallelujah! 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 Give him the glory.
glory. Amen. May it be done to you according to your faith. May the sound of rejoicing never depart from your house. Big and greater things are happening. Authority, influence, and dominion is your portion. This is our land. We've taken it for Jesus. Give him a shout in the house of God. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.